Joining us now on the markets, Tom Lee, uh, head of research at Fundstrat uh, Global Advisors, chief investment officer at Fundstrat Capital. And the list goes on and on. And he's a, a CNBC contributor, first post-election uh, ap- uh, appearance that we've had. Um, you knew Trump was going to win. Tom Lee's point about animal spirits suggests that there is a psychological boost in the market right now investors are feeling more optimistic and are willing to take on more risk. Well, Not many people did. Yes, that's... uh, I'll give you credit. Are you saying you didn't? Maybe you didn't say it in so many words, but you said it. Yes, I'd say that I... We were placing a lot more weight on what the betting markets were pointing to, and so... uh, And we... You know, when we look at all the deltas, that's... And you saw it in the Trump trade, and you saw it in Bitcoin. Correct. And you saw it in sectors of the market that would benefit from... That's right. Presumably, but who knows, uh, from a a Trump presidency. So 1,500 points a meet out of the gate. More to come, or are we already already there? Uh, I think we need to respect this move. I mean, there was a tremendous rally post-election, and it continued yesterday. I think it really does reflect... A lot of money was taken out of the market because of the uncertainty around the election. And now we know that because of policy changes and animal spirits, that this is really going to benefit things like Bitcoin and small caps and regional banks and financials. So I do think there's still a lot of upside. I mean, small caps trade at 10 times median forward earnings. I mean, that's a... So, you did, so what do you think that should be, 12 times? I mean, what, uh, what's, the, what's the opportunity set in your mind? Well, s- since 1987... Small caps traded on a median P.E. basis at a premium to the S&P. The S&P is at 17 times. So I think small caps could, in the next couple of years, outperform by you know, more than 100 percent. And what do you think about some of the macro issues that I think create a, a different level of uncertainty? We keep talking about the bond market and what that might be saying, what you think is happening with gold. You know, are the bond vigilantes going to be this governor on whatever you think is going to happen in Washington? While the overall market is experiencing a strong rally, Lee also hints at some underlying issues. There are sectors or areas of the market that are seeing sell-offs or aren't performing as well. This could mean that while some investors are enthusiastic about economic growth, others are more cautious or perhaps there are concerns in specific areas, even if the overall market looks strong. Uh, As James Carville famously said, you know, uh, the bond market is, everyone's scared of the bond market. So that is something we need to watch. But... We've had plenty of periods where stocks have risen with bonds rising. And I, and I kind of agree with Powell's assessment that it's not be, yields have gone up not because of inflation, but because there's sort of a change in growth expectations. Mm. I thought that a sweep was, for either party, was the death knell for the markets and frightening to all involved. And now we're getting a sweep. Why isn't it more frightening? Maybe a sweep the other way would have been a little more frightening to some. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think part of the reason investors are getting somewhat optimistic is that President Trump is entering office again, but this time with a lot more knowledge of how to build, a, you know, a cabinet and a team. And um, so in some ways, this would end up being more market friendly. And, and I think that's why investors are becoming optimistic. I mean, I kind of agree with the idea that there are animal spirits growing. It will never be deficit friendly. According to Lee, many investors took a cautious, de-risk position ahead of the election. This means they were concerned about potential social unrest, instability, or other negative consequences that could have followed a contentious election. Will he? I mean, he will be deficit-friendly. He won't be, you know, if we cut taxes on tips, Social Security, overtime, um, remove the salt cap, extend the tax cuts, if you do all those things, that, that... seems like it, it's going to be very difficult to fix the deficit with just changes in taxes and spending. But it's probably why Bitcoin is kind of interesting here, because uh, it's potentially a treasury reserve asset. And, you know, as if Bitcoin rises in price, it actually helps offset the liabilities, which is the deficit. So you were at 150, I think, on Bitcoin, weren't you? But yeah. Not necessarily by, by the end of this year or? I, I think six figures is still possible for it before the end of the year, yeah. But, and then more next year and the year after. Yeah, I, th- I think because now, you know, post having and uh, now Bitcoin's becoming a lot more relevant and I think maybe the regulatory overhang is, is diminishing that there's a lot of upside from here, yes. Okay, S&P. Um, and the next year. The rally reflects that after the uncertainty of the election, 
investors are now more confident and ready to re-enter the market, especially in sectors that benefit from strong economic growth. Well, I, uh, between now and year end, 5 to 10 percent is more. probably the base case, just because that's the type of rally post-election and we have a dovish Fed and, you know, the normal seasonals. Is that the right move right now for the Fed? I think inflation fighting uh, war is largely over and, you know, the real rate is still too high. So I agree with Fed's view that we need to move towards neutral, which, you know, which is towards 3 percent. So I think it is supportive of markets and, uh, you know, business investment has been constrained. So I think these things are positive. So what about uh, 2000? What's next year? Is that 25? They move so fast. They're like months now, uh, the years. So what about 2025? So uh, 5 to 10% more would, get, would put us well above. Yeah, more than 6,000 6, before year end. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. I, I think it, at least for the foreseeable future. No recession. No recession. And, and people want you to answer when I ask you a question. So what are you saying? 60, what hundred on, on the S&P? Uh, I think well past like 6700 no sometime 6700 yeah sometime next year because that's margin- another 20 percent is it yeah it's well it- tom lee believes that the market did not fully price in the outcome of the election which is why we're seeing such a strong rally today a 1500 point gain on the dow maybe 10 15 yeah because okay. you know margin debt hasn't really risen in the last four months and the stock market's up so we know investors haven't been adding risk and now we have earnings visibility and we have a continued dovish Fed and then this election's behind us, so multiple tailwinds exist. Oh, you're, you're pretty bullish. I, I think I'm pretty positive on, on the US and fundamentals, yes. Okay, good. It's almost like a collective sigh of relief as a lot of the fears about uncertainty and volatility have started to dissipate. But it's not just about the US, stock market, We're also seeing strength in the US. Dollar, which has been gaining against a basket of other major currencies. That's typically an indicator that investors are feeling more confident about the US economy in the wake of an election, especially when it comes to policies that are perceived to be more pro-growth. In fact, if you look at the performance of the dollar today, it's clear that global investors are positioning themselves in favor of the US economy in the short to medium term. Tom Lee, A well-known market strategist has been a vocal advocate for the ongoing strength of the technology sector, especially the so-called Magnificent Seven or Mag7 stocks, which have been pivotal in driving the market's performance this year. These large-cap tech companies like Apple, Microsoft and others have dominated the headlines and much of the investor focus, largely because they've benefited from rapid innovation, the growth of artificial intelligence, and their leadership in sectors like cloud computing and digital transformation. However, as we now move past the election and look ahead toward the rest of the year, Tom Lee believes that the broader market narrative is due for a shift. He argues that investors, who have been heavily invested in tech for much of this year, may begin to look elsewhere in the market, especially into sectors that have been left behind during the tech rally, but which could benefit from a return of what he calls animal spirits. Animal spirits and market breadth. The term animal spirits was famously used by economist John Maynard Keynes to describe the emotional and psychological factors that drive economic decision-making, such as confidence, optimism, and enthusiasm. Tom Lee believes that in the aftermath of the election, there could be a resurgence of these animal spirits, especially in sectors that have been out of favor in the current market cycle. This renewed optimism could spread across different areas of the economy, leading to greater market breadth, which would be a positive for broader equity market performance why the shift might happen now. Lee's thesis is predicated on the idea that with the election behind us, many of the political uncertainties that had dominated headlines for months will fade into the background. This opens the door for a more sustainable, growth-driven rally that encompasses a wider range of sectors, not just technology. Investors, who have largely positioned themselves in mega-cap tech stocks, may begin to look for opportunities in other parts of the market that offer more attractive valuations or those poised to benefit from changes in the economic or policy landscape. I share stock market's latest news, data, and important information on my Telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else, open the description of this video, click on my Telegram channel's link, and simply join my Telegram channel. As the market moves beyond the heightened political risk and noise associated with the election cycle, Tom sees a shift in investor behavior. 
investors might begin to gravitate towards companies that could be set to benefit from macroeconomic trends like mergers and acquisitions, corporate restructuring, and the potential for private equity expansion. This could signal a broader rally that involves smaller, less crowded parts of the market. Small cap stocks the next big opportunity? One area that Tom Lee sees as particularly ripe for growth is small cap stocks. Historically, small cap stocks tend to perform well during periods of economic recovery when confidence is high and the broader market has turned the corner. In particular, Tom believes that small cap stocks are still undervalued relative to their large cap counterparts. While tech stocks may be trading at lofty multiples, small cap stocks, especially those in cyclical sectors or those that stand to benefit from market consolidation, may offer significant upside potential. The valuation gap between large cap tech stocks and small cap stocks has been widening in recent years, and Tom believes this presents an opportunity for investors willing to diversify beyond the dominant tech names. Small cap stocks, which often have a more nimble business model and are better able to adapt to changing market conditions, could see more robust growth in the coming months, particularly if the broader market enters a period of economic expansion. Financials and basic materials key sectors to watch. Another area where Tom sees potential is in financial stocks. As interest rates continue to adjust in response to broader economic conditions, financial institutions could benefit from a steeper yield curve and stronger demand for financial products. Banks, insurance companies, and other financial institutions tend to do well in environments where the economy is growing, inflation expectations are stable, and interest rates rise. Tom sees this as an opportunity for investors to look beyond the tech-heavy parts of the market and consider the more traditional, economically sensitive sectors. Likewise, basic materials industries like industrial metals, chemicals and energy are likely to benefit from a continuation of the global economic recovery, especially if infrastructure spending accelerates or if global supply chains start to normalise. Companies in these sectors are often viewed as cyclical, meaning they tend to thrive during periods of economic growth as demand for raw materials, energy and industrial production increases. Tom believes that these sectors could be poised for a rebound, particularly if there is an uptick in government spending on infrastructure projects or if the global economy enters a new phase of growth. The case for market diversification and the next leg of growth. Ultimately, Tom Lee's outlook for the end of the year centers on a more diversified market rally, one that broadens out from the narrow focus on technology stocks. While the technology sector, especially the big names driving the MAG7 stocks, has been the dominant force in the market for much of this year. Lee believes the post-election period could usher in a more balanced market expansion. Investors, particularly those who have been heavily allocated to tech, may start looking for areas where valuations are lower and growth potential is higher. He sees potential for this shift in a number of places. Small cap stocks, with their relatively low valuations and room for growth, could be a big winner in the coming months, especially if there's a continued recovery in economic conditions. Likewise, sectors like financials and basic materials, while not as glamorous as tech, could see strong performance if the broader economy picks up steam. Companies in these sectors are generally more tied to the business cycle, so a recovery in industrial activity, consumer spending, and infrastructure investment could have a positive impact on their earnings what this means for investors going forward. For investors looking ahead, Tom Lee's message is clear the market is more than just tech. While technology has been the dominant theme for much of the year, there are plenty of other opportunities in sectors like small cap stocks, financials and basic materials that could provide significant upside potential as the market broadens out. He believes that the end of the election cycle, combined with a renewed sense of optimism in the economy, could lead to a period of more diverse and sustainable growth. For those who have been focused primarily on tech, this shift could present an opportunity to rebalance portfolios, reduce concentration in overvalued sectors, and capitalize on growth in areas that have been underappreciated. The key takeaway is that market breadth is likely to expand, and as that happens, investors may find that looking beyond the familiar tech giants will help unlock additional returns. In Tom Lee's view, the next leg of the market's rally could very well come from areas of the market that are currently undervalued and poised for a rebound, providing exciting opportunities for those willing to diversify and adjust their positioning.